one smart way of doing it is to use nonlinear devices NLD remember we have linear devices like resistance inductance and capacitance we call them linear because the relation between voltage and color and current is a linear one however for a nonlinear device like the diode the input and the output relation is nonlinear for example for a diode we have the current is related to the voltage using the exponential format here which is nonlinear recall that a nonlinear relation can be expressed in a power series format so the relation between the input and the output the voltage and current y and x instead of writing it in terms of exponential we can write the output or y equal to a times x of t plus b times x square and plus c times x cube and so on this is called uh, the power series expansion what makes this nonlinear is the power zero now if the input value is relatively small much smaller than one then these are going to be even smaller because you have a number that's smaller than one <coughs> sorry and then you multiply it by itself and you get a smaller and smaller number so these can be neglected so higher power can be easily neglected it's an easy way to neglect the higher power as you go in this direction the value of the power become more significant so we can think about ignoring all the high power ones and then we use just the first two terms so now if your input is made of if x is considered to be the sum of the two signals remember our objective is to multiply m by c adding is not a problem because we can put them in series so if we add the two together and then we take it through this expression okay we have two terms remember that the square of the two terms here if you square these two terms you get square of first plus square of second plus two times first times second which is the term that we are looking for so basically the existence of the square will allow the product term to appear nonlinear modulators uh, here is an example where this is an, a simple one where we just take the second term okay so we're just focusing on this term we're saying that this device this nonlinear device is basically a square and now we're saying if the input is the message and we have c of t the carrier they go through summation and then they go through the square yet what you get here at the output here we get m of t plus c of t okay the sum but the output of the square will get m squared okay uh, m squared all right which is uh, shown here i can just erase this so we can have uh, m squared plus two times m times c plus c squared you can see that the first term here is a, a low frequency term this one is a very high frequency term because cosine square will give you double the angle and if we have a band pass filter sent around the carrier so it's centered around the carrier and it has a bandwidth of 2b we can get the double side band suppressed carrier modulation which is the product of the two there's a scaling factor of two and as we mentioned scaling is not a distortion constant scaling is not a distortion the point is that we were able to multiply m by c using the nonlinearity here in the device uh, as an exercise i leave it for you to verify that this system is able to do uh, double sideband suppressed carrier modulation but it cannot uh, be used for demodulation uh, unless of course there's some condition there so i leave you to practice what happened if we start with here uh, with demodulation so i'll start here with m of t times c of t and then we have the carrier here so we get square and so on nonlinear modulators 
to avoid a problem that uh, might occur, we're, we have another type of nonlinear moderators. We can have two circuits instead of one. At the top, we have we are adding, okay. At the bottom, we are subtracting. Uh, you can see here that here we get the sum of the two, the green, and the and the red one will be the difference between the two. Going through the nonlinear device, this is more realistic than linear device because now we're including two terms. And in the previous one, it was easy, but uh, it, we just took the term that we like. To make it more realistic, we need to include the two terms here. And if we do this, we'll need two branches, as you can see here. For the output y, uh, y is now, uh, you take the input x, you take the entire thing, you square it. So we get the following term. Opening the brackets, we get the following terms. And now, if we collect terms with... Uh, similar frequencies we notice that we have some lovely terms terms that we like and terms that we don't like the desired term is the product all other terms are undesired this term is centered at omega c frequency so it can be selected using uh, a band bass filter our only problem is that uh, this is, is no problem because it's low frequency this is also no problem low frequency uh, this term is undesired because it occurs at the same frequency so even when they use a filter, it's going to show up. This is a constant DC, no problem. This is at very high frequencies, there is no problem. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are left with these two terms. To get rid of this term, we need the lower branch, which has a negative sign. So you can see now that we have similar terms, except that there is a minus sign here. If we subtract them from each other, now you see that these two terms, you can see that these two terms, are having opposite sign now if we subtract here there's a minus sign we get rid of one all other terms will be um, eliminated using uh, the use, uh, using the high bass filter or sorry band bass filter so this term which is undesired is a low frequency can be removed by the filter so the objective here is that we have two branches because we have more realistic nonlinear device and we need to get rid of one additional term. So by doing this balancing, we balance the term out. The result is we got the objective, the product term, which is uh, the modulated signal. The circuit is this circuit is called single balance modulator. It's balanced for a carrier. So this carrier is dropped out. Uh, it's balanced for the carrier, so no carrier term appears at the output or at the input to the band bus filter uh, we can also have double balance modulators and that's the case if if you don't want to with, with double balance we don't need the filter we just we, we with double balance we get rid of both terms okay, so we just get the product term 